Hello and welcome to the webinar CoreSuite Service Best Practice. As you know, it should have taken place last week on the 26th of March, unfortunately, because of huge internet provider problems from my side in the home office, it was not possible for me to provide you this webinar. Therefore, I am doing this recording here for you and of course for our YouTube channel where we will upload the video as well. Um, yeah, so a little bit late, but nevertheless with the same topic, cost we service best practice, here we are with the webinar. Um, my name is Raphael Hübner. I'm a partner manager working for the Core Systems AG and I'm taking care of our partners in Europe or in the US or in the UK. And I'm here today to show you two different cases uh, where we personally used CoSuite service for our end customers to, to gain some um, more added value. And I want to show you those in this short webinar. And the agenda, what do we want to do? I just want to start quickly with the target. What's our target of this webinar? What do you, you gonna see here? What are the requirements for using CoreSuite service itself? Just repeating this again. Then we're gonna take a quick look only on the report subscription. That's a feature that's more or less new in CoreSuite service, which hasn't been available from the beginning on. And then we're gonna take a look on those two different cases I've prepared. And in the end, usually there would be a question and answer session, but due to the fact that it's a recording, uh, we will skip this and I will say something about this, about the Q and A session in the end of this webinar and there will be the important links where you get some information. So let's get started about the target. What do, what's our target with this webinar? Of course, we want to show, as mentioned, examples how we use CoSuite service um, in our projects for end customers. And I want to introduce you to the report subscription and how does it look like and where can you find it? So, quickly about the requirements. There, more or less, nothing has changed since back then. Um, to take advantage of the service, you need to have, of course, SAP Business One knowledge, and also you need some experience with the Core Suite Customize or the Core Suite Designer, because that's um, where, it's, where, where the solution is more or less based on. And some hard facts are that you need an installed country package with the Design and Customize version 6.75, also so the Core Suite installer at least 6.7. And about Business One itself, you need at least 9.2 patch level 04. Also, I want to um, mention here that this is now the second webinar for Core Suite service. So I won't explain the solution itself um, completely, let's say from, from the beginning, how I did back then in this other webinar. Therefore, I put in here the link for the Core Suite service webinar number one, I would say. There you find really the general information, how is it used, where, um, what is the Core Suite service for, and so on and so on. So if, if this product is completely new for you, it might make sense to watch this other, uh, this other webinar first, and then later on coming back here to this webinar. So let's jump to the report subscription. Um, the report subscription uh, is a feature that ha I have been asked for quite many times now since the first webinar and when will it be there and where can I find it and so on and so on. Therefore, I thought it might make sense to quickly uh, put it here into this webinar as well. You see already the screenshot, you see already the marked box and the report subscriptions can be used in combination with Core Suite service and now we jump out of the PowerPoint and I quickly show you the one. Where is it? Boop. Going to business one and usually when you want to go to Core Suite service the way is administration, add-ons, Core Suite 
customize, and then you find here the core suite service rules. This is the way to core suite service. To get to this report subscription, you need to go to add-ons and then to the designer. And here you find, as you found already before, the report subscription. And what's new here is now this, um, what I have marked already in the PowerPoint. It is the course suite service, um, which you can choose for executing. So instead of selecting a specific user or any logged in user, you can now say, I want to use course suite service for my report subscriptions. Yes, that's it. That's what I quickly wanted to show. And now we can jump as soon as I get back to my PowerPoint. Here we go. We can go to case number one. So what's the first case? The first case is synchronization of SAP field service management in core suite time. It is about this. Uh, when a SAP FSM user means someone on the field is synchronization, uh, synchronizing his, his or her app, um, maybe there is an effort. This is what I will use in my example. Um, the time object will be proceed in, in business one in the time module without any locked in user means the only that the server is running and this is already enough so that the effort in this example can be proceeded in time without any locked in user and to do this you need to prepare something except of the rule that i will show you that's why i have here the screenshot you need to um to copy some files to the dll um folder so here in my case this is the the path i was going windows program files sap b1 add-ons core core suite then my database sbo underscore huda then you need to copy those files the ct ct uh, underscore cloud connector and the sap dot dll all those you have to copy here into this folder, which is the core suite service DLL folder. If you put them here, then you prepared everything for the synchronization with time by the service. So let's jump out and I maybe show you how it looks like then in V1 itself. And it looks like this. First, we go back to Windows, uh, not to Windows, sorry, to B1, add-ons, Cosy Customize, and to Cosy Service Rules. And here we can find uh, the sample rule, of course. That's the one you always have. And I just call it time rule, very simple. And I've got no start date or any recurrence or anything. It's just a rule that's never stopped running. And it is a startup code which means as soon as the service starts, it will execute it immediately. And this is then how the rule itself looks like. We have here the um, configuration or the, the connection to my virtual machine. This is the name of the virtual machine. Then we have here the database, <coughs> sorry. And here we have then Again, the connection to the database and here the information that at the, um, the log info that it's starting the synchronization of time. There are the different um, um, tables that we need. And then it is synchronizing it uh, or it's starting the synchronization. And this line here shows just that it would display an error if there is one, which we hopefully won't see. Okay, so um, I will close now my business one because that's of course one of the most important things. We want to see that it works without any locked in user. So let's close it. 
And what I do next is I will quickly share my screen from or dis, uh, display my screen from the iPhone. Let's see. So you can see now my iPhone and I'm in SAP Field Service Management and I just created, as you can see, some imaginary service call called Time Rule. And I will go on the plus and I will create an effort quickly. It's production, let's say it goes three hours for some reason and I'll just save it. You can see I have already some because I tested it. And I did the German uh, webinar as well. So you see here now my effort from today. And what I do is I'm gonna synchronize now. Boop. And now we quickly jump back here. Zack, zack. And we go to the SQL Server Management Studio. And what we will see now is we've got the core cloud received and the core cloud sent. The received means that we get now the information, hopefully. Oh, execute. Oh, oh yeah. maybe I shouldn't mark anything. No. We got in received the time effort. Now that I just created, you can see the time here. Um, and it's now received. And what's happening next is it's uh, going to proceed with the this time effort or this object in course with time. And then when it's done, it will send the information to the cloud. So hopefully if I refresh or execute again, we won't find it anymore here in the received table. We will find it hopefully now here in the send table. Let's see. And great. It's shown now here that the time effort has been proceeded, everything worked out, and now, um, yeah, it's done. So everything worked out, even though nobody was locked in into business one. This would be a case how we use um, CoreSuite service uh, for an end customer. Maybe I can mention in meantime, because now I'm going to start quickly business one again for the next case, that this rule, or also the next one I'm going to present, you can find it as well in your email that you received um, from me. Um, for all those who registered for the webinar, there you have those two codes in a text um, data so that you can use it, customize it, or whatever you want to do with it, take a look on it. Um, yeah, I send it to you also as an, as an attachment. So let's move on to the second, well, maybe I should stop here and go back to the PowerPoint. Come on. Oh. Clicking through, case two is the memory check for HANA. This is also uh, something that we do for an end customer. He asked us this, he wants um, a memory check um, of his HANA environment. And we created something like this via the service that every 30 minutes there will be a memory check um, proceeded. And when there is a limit that's exceeded, then automatically an email will be generated and sent to the IT. And then they can take a look because they got the information, oh, something seems to be yeah, uh, a little bit uh, exceeded in regards to the memory check. As you maybe already noticed is the little issue I have here that I have no HANA environment so that I cannot really show you this case um, by executing this rule, but I thought at least I would jump into business one to show you how it looks like or how the rule looks like so that we can take a look. And it would be like this. Let we go again to the service. And if we go now to the editor, or maybe I go first 
back to the screen before. You can see, okay, there's again no end as a recurrence or all 1,800 seconds, what are 30 minutes. Um, it is executing the rule. And what's happening then is you can see a lot of comments here uh, from the colleague from support, which explains everything. First thing is that it defines the connection. Again, this would be my virtual machine, my database. Then there is the, the, the query um, that's used. And this is in this case, uh, select the doc entry. And I'm using here a Swiss add-on. That's why um, it's not country package or anything. It's Swiss add-on, the, the Swiss uh, version of the country package. And it's um, then checking the, um, or it's then creating the query first. And here is then the connection to the designer, then print API for the connection. And here it is getting then the result, which here's the use case that it's first is reading out the memory usage. And here there will be then the result. And then um, there would be the lock. And in the end here, we can find the email where it sends out the information in case that the uh, uh, memory in use is higher than 85, then there would be the email that has been sent to the IT. And to do this, uh, maybe I should quickly show here the print definition because there's something important to know for this. I, uh, there is written email as ID. That's the reason because here the name ID is email for this. And what you should know is also that the send mode for needs to be used, the SMTP direct. And then it would send the email, in this case to my email address with the subject memory check. And there is some text, oh, watch out, the, the, um, the limit has been exceeded. And here's the from address. Um, where the emails comes from. Yeah, so that's the point. And this would be the two cases I wanted to show you. And herewith, we come back to the PowerPoint. And as mentioned, you get both rules in the email as well as attachment. Usually, there would be a Q&A session now, but a uh, due to this problems um, for the live webinar, it is not possible this time. And what I would suggest is just in this case that we do it this way. If there are any kind of questions about course suite service or you have some feedback or you want, I don't know what, whatever it is, just contact me. Um, my email is also in this presentation. Um, then you can just contact me. We can talk in a one-to-one -one session about it, have a call, just email, whatever it is. And also, I want to show you those important links. Of course, the website, our general contact, and there is the link for the course suite service documentation where you can find all information that you need about the solution. Yeah. And that's it from my side. Thank you very much for attending or watching the video and hopefully hearing soon from you. Have a good time. And in this times, very important, stay safe, stay home. Bye-bye.